Okay, so this tutorial is on the mucosa of the larynx. So we're going to look at how the mucosa folds to form the true and false vocal cords. So we're looking anteriorly at the, at the larynx here, and I'm just going to rotate the model round, and we're going to look superiorly down. So we've got the tongue here anteriorly, and now we're just going to zoom in and look into the, into the larynx. So you've got mucosa which lines the epiglottis and the structures of the larynx. So you can see this pink um, pink stuff here. So this is representing the mucosa. So it's not entirely accurate in this model, so I'm going to talk you through it to explain it. So connecting to the, to the lateral aspect of the um, epiglottis, we've got mucosa which hangs down. And I'll come on to that in a moment. But first we'll talk about the, the epiglottis the mucosa which reflects off the anterior surface of the tongue so so the anterior surface of the epiglottis onto the back of the tongue the base of the tongue so we've got mucosa which attaches the tongue to the to the epiglottis so in the midline we've got some mucosa which reflects back and attaches onto the tongue from the um, epiglottis and laterally on either side we've got reflections of mucosa which attach to the tongue like so. So I've just drawn these on very broadly and in between these reflections you've got these little depressions and this this is these are called vellecula. So the reflection in the midline is called the median glossoepiglottic fold and laterally you've got two well you've got the lateral glossoepiglottic folds so you've got the glossoepiglottic folds on either side and you've got one in the midline which reflect from the epiglottis onto the tongue and you've got two depressions either side of the midline which are called vellecula so I've just switched over to this um, diagram here and it shows what I just showed you in diagrammatic form so you've got the epiglottis here you've got the tongue at the base of the tongue here and you've got these reflections of mucosa so the median glossoepiglottic fold and you've got the lateral glossoepiglottic fold on either side with the vellecula in the, um, on either side of the median glossoepiglottic fold so coming back to the 3D model what we've got what we're looking at is the epiglottis here so it isn't shown on this model here but the mucosa actually attaches laterally to the um, to the epiglottis so it kind of drapes off the epiglottis so it hangs off laterally and it hangs down and connects to the arytenoid the arytenoid cartilages um, and forms the entrance to the larynx so it forms the laryngeal inlet which I've described to you so remember we're looking at this superior view and I'll just orientate you quickly so I've just removed the mucosa um, and you can see the arytenoid cartilages sitting on top of the cricoid cartilage and you can see the little corniculate cartilages sitting on top of the arytenoid cartilages so we're looking straight down the larynx into the, and you can see the trachea, the rings of the trachea here so I've just brought back the, the mucosa and you can see posteriorly the little slit which is the opening of the esophagus behind so remember I told you that the the mucosa shown here isn't entirely accurate. It actually attaches to the lateral margins of the epiglottis and it connects to the arytenoid. So remember the position of the arytenoid cartilages is around here. So the mucosa hangs off the sides of the uh, epiglottis and attaches to the arytenoid cartilages and it forms this fold called the epiglottic fold. So suspended within this fold of mucosa, you've got a little cartilage called the cuneiform cartilage. So you've got a little round bump on either side called the cuneiform cartilage. And then it, it envelops the arytenoid cartilage, which sits around here. And then the mucosa joins posteriorly like this. So when you're looking at the superior view like you might do with a laryngoscope, you've got the the epiglottis anteriorly, you've got and then laterally you've got these airy epiglottic folds which connect from the sides of the epiglottis to the arytenoid cartilage 
and then you've got little bumps here which you can now recognize as the cuneiform cartilages suspended in the aryepiglottic fold and you've got the arytenoid cartilages which you know about. So what we're looking at here is the laryngeal inlet. So this is the entrance to the larynx. So anteriorly we've got this mucosa lining the superior aspect of the epiglottis and then laterally we've got these aryepiglottic folds which I've just told you about. And then so you've got these these two tubercles which mark the cartilages which you know about. So the first one is the cuneiform cartilage and the second one is the is a tubercle marking the position of the um, corniculate cartilage sitting on top of the arytenoid cartilage. And then you've got this posterior border formed between a fold of mucosa which um, sits between the two arytenoid cartilages. So when looking at the superior view, you don't really get a sense of um, the oblique angle of this laryngeal inlet. So you know that the arytenoid cartilage is lower than the top of the epiglottis. So this inlet is not at the same level, it's oblique. So this laryngeal inlet can be closed by the epiglottis moving down and closing off the entrance to the larynx. So I've just switched over to this diagram and this shows what I've just shown you in diagrammatic form. So you've got the, the epiglottis here anteriorly and then you've got these folds of mucosa coming off the sides of the epiglottis and they connect to the arytenoid cartilage and they contain the cuneiform and the corniculate cartilage and then there's this connection posteriorly between the arytenoid cartilages. So this is the laryngeal inlet that we're looking at and the mucosa forms folds over the vestibular ligament first to form the vestibular fold so this is this fold here and then you've got the vocal fold where the 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 mucosa folds over the vocal ligament so the vestibular fold here which folds over the vestibular ligament is referred to as the false vocal cord and the vocal fold which folds over the vocal ligament is called the true vocal cord so I've just switched to the 3D model and you can see that we're now looking at a cross-section of the laryngeal structures. So I'm just going to rotate the model around and I'll talk you through the mucosa from a different angle. So you've got the epiglottis here seen dissected from the from the medial view and we've got the arytenoid cartilage sitting posteriorly we've got the vocal ligament extending from the vocal process to the thyroid angle inside the thyroid and we've got the broad lamina of the thyroid cartilage shown here so the aryepiglottic fold hangs down drapes down over the epiglottis from the sides of the epiglottis onto the arytenoid cartilage so it hangs off the sides of the of the epiglottis which I'm sh drawing on here. So you can see from the view I showed you earlier this the laryngeal inlet is is at a f an oblique angle. So in this um in, in this diagram here it's actually shown vertical but if you imagine the the epiglottis pulled backwards so it's more upright. So I've just drawn a more upright epiglottis in blue. So the aryepiglottic fold would hang off kind of like this onto the arytenoid cartilage and it's more to an oblique angle. So just coming back to this drawing, we've got the aryepiglottic fold hanging off the sides of the epiglottis here. So remember connecting from the superior depression of the anterolateral surface of the arytenoid cartilage, we've got the um, the thickening of the quadrangular membrane which forms the vestibular ligament. So the quadrangular membrane sits just outside the mucosa, so the mucosa lines this quadrangular membrane and it actually envelops the superior margin only. But so so we've got the we've got this vestibular ligament here and the the aryepiglottic fold, this fold of mucosa folds underneath this ligament. So it comes and folds underneath the ligament and it folds and then it goes out laterally like this and then it curves back in and it folds under the 
vocal ligament. So the best way to show you how these folds form the vocal and vestibular folds is to take a cross section right down through here, um, a coronal section, and show you this in a diagram. So we're looking here at a coronal section of the larynx. So you've got the epiglottis at the top and you've got these folds of mucosa coming off here. Um, so what we're looking at here is the, the, the mucosa coming down, descending into the larynx and it folds outwards laterally underneath the ventricular, sorry, the vestibular ligament. And then it comes back out and it folds over the vocal ligament. So you've got this, this trough formed by the folds of mucosa and this is called the laryngeal ventricle. And then you can see how the mucosa continues downwards and it um, is continuous with the trachea below. So this first fold is called the vestibular fold and this is the false vocal cord and the second fold is the vocal fold and this is the true vocal cord. So the vocal, the vo true vocal cord can be seen as a white structure and the vestibular folds can be seen as a more pinkish structure. So these folds divide up the, the larynx into three major compartments. So you've got an upper compartment, a middle compartment and a lower compartment. So the upper compartment is above the vestibular fold and below the laryngeal inlet. So it's this area here. And this is called the vestib vestibule. So the middle compartment lies between the vocal folds and the vestibular folds. So it's this middle region here, and it's a very thin little space. And the, the inferior compartment of the laryngeal cavity is the infraglottic space. So this bottom chamber is the infraglottic space, and it extends from below the vocal folds to the opening of the larynx into the trachea. So the, the larynx ends at the bottom of the cricoid cartilage and it becomes continuous with the trachea here. So this is the infraglottic infra compartment. So you've got the supraglottic compartment, the vestibule, which lies above the vestibular folds and the laryngeal inlet. And then you've got the middle chamber, which lies between the vocal folds and the vestibular folds. And then you've got the infraglottic compartment which lies between the vocal folds and the opening of the larynx into the trachea, so the bottom of the cricoid cartilage where it becomes continuous with the trachea. So where this where the, the mucosa bulges out here between the vocal and vestibular folds, you've got this space, this sort of trough so this space between these folds is called the laryngeal ventricle. And you can see this dotted, this dotted line extending backwards and upwards. This is the laryngeal saccule. So it kind of, this, this saccule has glands which produce secretions which lubricate the, the larynx. So you've got the laryngeal saccule and the laryngeal ventricle. And the saccule has glands which secrete mucus secretions to lubricate the vocal folds. So this diagram here shows a sagittal section. So we can see the epiglottis here with the aryepiglottic fold and the mucosa hanging down. And then we've got the vestibular ligament. So the mucosa folds underneath the vestibular ligament. And this black space here shows the, the laryngeal ventricle. And then you've got the, it folds back over over the vocal ligament. So you've got the vocal fold. So just to show it from another angle. So just coming back to this superior view, just want to point out that the space between the vocal folds is called the rima glottidis, and the space between the vestibular folds is referred to as the rima vestibuli. So that's, um, that's the mucosal folds and lining of the larynx. So I hope that's given you a better understanding of what the vocal folds are and how the mucosa is draped over these laryngeal structures and how the laryngeal cavity and ventricle and saccular are formed.